So today I'm going to be trying out soil blocking. So we ordered from Johnny's Seed Company. We ordered last year in 2022. I'm not sure when we ordered this, but, uh, and we haven't used it. It's a small, I'm not sure what the size is. I'll, I'll try to link it and everything if, if they have that available. I don't know, soil blocking device. And all the soil goes in here. Here, I'll try to do it. I kind of need like a bin for it. I don't have a bin right now, but I need a bin to like mix up the soil because it's it's not just bag soil that you need you need to kind of make your own mixture okay so the soil goes in here like that and then you use the little handle and they pop out as cubes you do it into a tray obviously so I'm gonna try this out we have three different things to plant today a ton of asparagus four packets of asparagus and I'm just gonna start them all because asparagus takes so long to establish and grow you can never have too much like if we have too much then we'll just let it continue growing or we can cut it and give it to friends and family and stuff. So we have a big enough yard and garden space right now that I'm just gonna make a giant asparagus patch. As big as I can make it this year and as much room as I can find, I might make two different ones or three different ones. So I'm gonna start four packets worth. We probably have eight already started from last year and I just overwintered wintered them in the garden because I, I couldn't get them planted in time that they would establish and survive the winter. So they overwintered in here, great. They're actually popping up right now. Like now would be the time that you're cutting them and picking them if they were in the ground and established. So yeah, well, that's what I'm gonna be planting. So this is the other one. Both of these seeds are from Baker Creek. We have the Mary Washington asparagus that we're gonna plant, four packets of, and I have one packet of the Green Globe artichoke. And you have to start these each two to three months before your average last frost date. Right now is a good time to I love you, Bubba. You have fun, okay? Baby was trying to get in the greenhouse. <laughs> yeah, our friends watch, keeping an eye on him, keep trying to keep him out of here, and he was just looking like, ah, um, so I had to go say hi to him. <laughs> Let him know everything was good. Yeah, the Green Globe Artichoke. Yeah, it says, so indoors, two to three months before average last frost. Transplant to rich, deep, well-drained soil. Seedlings require chill period, nights below 45, but above freezing to produce chokes. So, I might actually maybe keep these outside on our porch instead of in here, because... All of this is staying above 45, I believe. I don't I don't even know because for some reason, we don't have a thermometer in here. We don't have a temperature gauge at all or a humidifying like reader. What are they, I don't know what those are called. Why, why can't I think of the word for that? I had some that I ordered off of Amazon. These actually work really well. We purchased, we probably got like six or seven different ones of these, but it's been two or three years since I bought them and they've all died and they have weird batteries. So we're gonna get a analog old school one that just measures it with, I think mercury or something. We're just gonna get the old school style ones that don't need batteries and they just run no matter the temperature or humidity and they don't need any special conditions. Uh, that way we don't have to worry about it because it is kind of a pain not knowing what temperature it is. We have a heater going in here, but some of these plants are definitely doing probably worse than they could be doing. Like we could keep the temperature maybe warmer next winter in here and like the banana would do better. The coffee plant is gone. Like I don't think that's coming back. So there are things we've been slacking on <laughs> in this greenhouse, but you know, it's all a learning process. It's taking forever. I'm way off subject. We are going to grow the Mary Washington's soak seeds for 24 hours. I'm should. I'll do an experiment with these. I'll soak two of the packets for 24 hours and the other ones I'm just going to plant and then keep the soil moist. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to try out the soil blocking, see if it works. If, if not, I will use these. So these are typically what we would use, the plastic seed starting trays. But I've read some articles and seen some stuff that says, well, especially this type of plastic that's like soft, will break down and kind of leach into your soil. There's BPAs and plastics everywhere. We're trying to like minimize the amount we're exposed to. We have some trays like this. I think these are the ones for the soil blocking. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna set up the camera so you can see what I'm doing. If it doesn't seem like it's working out, I'm probably just gonna switch to the plastic because I don't wanna, because I don't want to plant all of these soil blocks and then just have them like crumble apart. That can happen with these. If your soil mixture is not correct, when they start to dry out a little bit, 
it'll just fall apart. When you get it correct and you get the mixture right, it will literally stay in the little square pot shape. And the soil blocking is really cool because these come in a, a variety of sizes. And what they do is they sell these little attachments on the inside. Oh, poke it out. So it's already like pre-poked for your seed to go in. And they also, this one will fit in the next size up. So if you did need to transplant, if you started these months ahead of time and you needed to transplant up, you can get the next size up of this. So you can literally just take your small soil block and put it in the medium size soil block and it's a perfect fit in the, in those. And they also have like larger, like it just keeps going up so you don't have to use plastic at all. Honestly, I might eventually not use these and just use a wooden tray that I make. But right now we're not trying to get any more overwhelmed than I already am. So the goal is just to get some seeds, to get some seeds planted and get started. And I've been talking long enough, so here we go. So I did look it up and it is these trays for the soil blocking just to allow drainage, I'm sure. I'm gonna do two trays of the asparagus right now and two, one tray of the artichoke, one to two trays, depending on how many seeds are in there. And we'll just try to make this work with what we have. Like I said, I probably need a, a bucket for this so I can like really press down on it, but I'll just, pack it down with my hand if I have to. It'll take a little bit longer than it's supposed to, but I think it might work. Honestly, not bad. So you want a lot of peat moss. Peat is the um, key for soil blocking to get the structure. Something about the property of peat allows it to stay in this shape that you want, so. We'll see if we can get this on camera. Perfect. So that's exactly what you want. And I'll even do like one, two right here. But I'm just gonna go along right next to it. Boom, boom, boom. The mixture you want for soil blocking is mostly peat, but you do want some drainage in there, some perlite or vermiculite mixed in. That's kind of what this is. This has bagged soil mixed with peat moss, mixed with compost. Like there's a little bit of everything mixed into this um, soil bed. This thing is really nice. Like having <laughs> having pre-mixed soil just kind of ready to go has been awesome. Like we've used it a ton for potting up stuff. Look at that. It's working perfect. This is a five. They sell ones that do like 10 or 15 at a time. They they sell ones that you can just stand up and use. They're, they're like a step. They're almost like a shovel where you can just step on it and then release it from a standing position. Like if you're doing this for work, you don't wanna be hunched over and doing this like with your back all day long. We're not a production farm. We're just two people trying to grow some good food. So I didn't think we would need all that because it is it is kind of, it gets, it gets really pricey, the soil blocking stuff. Honestly, gardening can get really pricey too if you let it. Like if you wanna get all bag soil, for your raised beds or something, and you're not using some of the methods that you see, like where people put, they fill up half the raised bed full of sticks and old branches and grass and stuff. If you're not doing that and you're just putting pure soil in it, like it gets expensive to buy soil. At least last year when we were purchasing soil, it was 12.50 per bag. A bag of soil does not go as far as you would think. If you have a way to get soil or compost delivered in bulk, that's the way to go. Like once we started making our own compost and we got some delivered, we very rarely will buy any kind of soil from the store. Okay, so it does say to soak these for 24 hours to do it the proper way. So for the half of the asparagus, we're gonna do an experiment and see how big of a difference it makes. We've got two packets. We're gonna soak these seeds overnight, come back and plant them in the morning. We grew artichokes last year. Spot I put them was not very good. It was it was on a really slow part of our yard. They died completely back during um, our summer. We kind of had a drought and I put them in a spot that wasn't easily 
able to be watered, so they really suffered. And I honestly just thought they died, but they came back. So hopefully this year, as long as we can keep up with them, they'll get huge and we won't have to worry about them as much. And um, we might end up actually getting some artichokes off them. The good thing about artichokes and asparagus is that they're perennials. So they'll just come back year after year. Asparagus plants will last 20 to 30 years from what I've heard. So you're not able to even harvest your asparagus for the first two and a half or two for the first two seasons and the third season is when you can really start harvesting and after that it's easy going these are the artichoke seeds and honestly they look like sunflower seeds like they're kind of cute one seed into each little cell and then what i'll do is i'll come back through and sprinkle give the top a little sprinky a couple of these did not form very well like i didn't get the soil as wet as I should have probably. Even if they fall apart, even if these soil blocks fall apart, like I'm not gonna stress it. As long as we get a couple of artichoke plants out of this whole packet, I'll be happy. My ADHD kicks in and I start like getting out of order and going the wrong way. Getting two instead of one. What I'm doing is filling up some of these seed cell trays that I just talked poorly about because we had a bunch of extra artichoke seeds. Basically guarantee that we have some that survive. And I don't, I've never done the soil blocking before, so I'm not super confident in my ability to make things grow. If it um, goes well, next year we're gonna only, we're gonna swap over to only doing soil blocking and make that our main source of seed starting. Apparently the amounts of plastic that can leach out of these over the years of using them, it's not just the using it one time, it's that most people use them over and over and over and they start to break down. Like with the composting actions that happen, the heat, the sunlight, like the plastic just breaks down over time and then it ends up in your soil and eventually in your bloodstream, you end up eating it. So we don't want that and I might do more than one seed per uh, cell tray. Chrissy purchased some of these little garden marker stakes. We're gonna use these. We had plastic ones. They ended up all over our garden. Like I said, we're trying to avoid plastic in our garden. I'm gonna do the same thing with the asparagus. I'm gonna make a soil block tray just watch a video on it. Like, I don't know why I haven't watched a full video recently. I watched one a long time ago, but I cannot remember how to properly do it. So I'm kind of just winging it, and then I'm gonna complain if it doesn't work. It's me. Don't, don't be like me, basically is what I'm saying. Mary Washington, classic asparagus variety, widely grown for a century, productive and very long lived. How about that shrimp posture though? Give it a quick rinse, soak down. These seeds don't look as tasty. But same idea, I'm gonna. Oh. Put 10 seeds per, oops. I'm gonna put uh, two or three seeds per cell. That way we maximize our chances of getting plants in every single one of them. Globe artichokes, the green globe artichokes, and these are the Mary Washington asparagus. Uh, I did one soil blocking of each and one of the seed trays. I also pinch these clothes. I think that's how you're supposed to do it. And then I sprinkled, <laughs> I sprinkled soil over the top of these. So that, I think that kind of defeats the purpose. Now you can't even tell where the cells are, but it is what it is. I'm learning. I learned my own, uh, at my own pace, I guess. So yeah, that's mainly what I'm gonna plant today. I also got 
these. These are hybrid Lysanthus. So because we're doing a cut flower garden, I'm gonna try these out. These apparently work really well for cut flowers. It says to sow 12 to 13 weeks in deep cell packs before last frost date. So 12 to 13 weeks, like we're somewhere in that range right now, which is about what these need, two to three months. Yeah, I'm gonna get these started. These have actually have to be inside, it looks like. You have to keep the soil moist and saturated and maintain 70 to 75 degree temperature, which is perfect. That's about what our inside is. And you don't cover these. Like these need light to germinate, it, it looks like so. So you can kind of see the pellets. This is like a beauty. This is my beauty guru uh, technique right here. So these are pelleted seeds that put something on them to coat them because they're such a tiny seed apparently, which I don't really know how that works when they need light to germinate, but I guess they've figured it out. Keep soil evenly moist but not saturated. Lights needed provide good, good air circulation until emergence. So early transplanting is recommended. Transplant no later than the fourth leaf stage. I mean, we'll try. It says to start 12 weeks. They really scrimp on these seeds. Plant the rest of these later because I'm not sure if I'm planting these too early. It says 12 weeks, but. Christy didn't want me to, but I am gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna start some onions because last year our onions were stunted and kind of lame. And I feel like we left them in the cups too long and didn't acclimate them and plant them into the ground soon enough. So I'm gonna plant some Texas Early Grano and some Melissa Craig Giant Onions. I don't know how big this kid is. We grew these last year. This must be a tiny kid or a messed up perspective because our onions only got this big, but I think we did something wrong. All right, well, um, I was only supposed to soak these for 24 hours. I ended up soaking them for almost two days. So, <laughs> I better get these planted. I think it was two days, it might have been more. That's why I usually don't do stuff like that because I tend to, as soon as it's out of my sight, it's out of my mind. So, they might be drowned, they might be totally fine and come up even sooner. I'm still gonna plant them. These are the asparagus seeds, the Mary Washington asparagus seeds we got from Baker Creek, so yeah, I'll just uh, start planting. I'm also gonna be planting these in bigger pots and putting multiple seeds in just because I did screw up and hopefully at least like one or two of the seeds comes up and they'll have room to grow. If all of them come up, then they'll have room to grow. If one or two comes up, great, but I'm going to just sprinkle in a ton in each cup because I didn't do this right. And really it is only like one and a half packets, two packets of seeds. It's not, it's not the end of the world. I can't help it. I have a really hard time remembering anything that's out of my sight. Like once it's gone, it's gone. Once you got a, a toddler at your heels at all times, it's really hard to focus on the rest of life. These pots are definitely overkill. These are kind of the size they sell them in at the nursery, so. Uh, I might as well water the rest of the greenhouse while I'm in there. Well, that's that. I planted the artichoke, the asparagus in multiple different ways. We'll see which ways um, work best for us in our greenhouse and in our climate. Yeah, hopefully we get something. I'm not expecting much out of the ones that I soaked because I did soak them for too long. But who knows? All of those seeds might germinate and there'll be hundreds of plants. So that is, that's kind of the hope. I want to have multiple asparagus beds on our property. So that will all start this year. If not, we'll end up just, we'll either start more seeds or get some asparagus crowns of a different variety and starting a separate bed somewhere else. I wanna have multiple perennial sites on the cleared portions of our property. I'd like to have berry bushes growing everywhere, uh, apples and other fruit trees kind of growing all along the open paths that we get sunlight to. And things like an asparagus bed would be really nice. Um, rhubarb, 
strawberries just planted here and there would be really nice. Hopefully this works and that'll be the beginning of some of those patches. I've seen permaculture planners that they'll take an aerial view and just pictures of your property and the knowledge like that you can send them of your property and they'll plot out like where you should plant everything just based on the sun and the times of year and your growing zone and stuff. So I do want to reach out to a couple of people about that, people who are more knowledgeable um, about permaculture because it'd be great to have more of a maintenance free area outside of our actual like um, annual garden where we're growing our tomatoes and stuff like that. It'd be just awesome to have things that will naturalize in our woods, not be invasive like the blackberries. We can just pick from those and harvest those whenever without having to put in all of the extra work <laughs> of gardening and composting and stuff like that because that'll be too much, too much. So if you guys know of anybody who does consultations like that, or you know of anybody who's like really into permaculture and knows their stuff, put their info in, in the comments because I really do want to reach out to some people and get more like, we want to get more involved in the community of uh, gardening, permaculture, homesteading and stuff like that because we really are starting with no knowledge other than the knowledge that people have been kind enough to uh, share online. Like we both grew up in town so we don't really have a background in this. None of our parents, none of our parents were farmers. So yeah, we don't come from uh, farming or anything like that. We're learning all of this along the way. So we're just learning all of this from YouTube right now. So it, I think it would be good for us to reach out to more people in like the community, the homesteading community, and like kind of share knowledge back and forth with them because I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. God damn it, Christy. Christy usually does the talking, but I'm just rambling at this point. If you know of anybody who does this, we know of some some of the bigger channels we already know of and, and we and we watch them all the time. So go ahead and um, throw their info down in the comments. We need all the help we can get basically is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's the video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Not in the greenhouse. Well, there's water dripping. <sighs> I'm the worst. Um. <sighs> Fuck. Dang it. I'm so bad at talking to the camera. Um, I'm bad. It's not. I'm bad with uh, saying um and like. My bridge words are. Um, or um, are, are bad. I drive myself crazy when I go to edit these. It doesn't sound as bad for you guys, but when I'm editing it, I'm like, oh. I'm like, I'm driving myself crazy. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> My apologies, I'm gonna edit that out. Ah! Okay, I don't know, I, we've read some, some data, or we haven't reported through the data. 